Okay, good morning Year 9. Um, so we're going to be doing your math lessons a little bit differently now for the next um, kind of couple of weeks. And so this is going to be the normal format from now on going forwards. So today we're going to start looking at some inequalities. So most of what we do today should be things that you've um, seen before, but there may be a few bits that are new to you today. Okay, so to start us off today, we're going to do this do now task. It's reviewing some of the work that you did last week on percentages. Um, I'm expecting this task to take you about five minutes. That includes marking your answers using the answers given on Show My Homework. So both this worksheet and the answers are also attached on Show My Homework um, if you prefer to access the questions that way. You can choose uh, one of the columns to complete, not all three of them. The first one is just calculating the percentages. The second column would be some increased questions and the third column is some decreased questions. So pause the video now and complete um, some of those questions for about five minutes. OK, I hope the starter task went well and that you've uh, managed to mark all of your answers there. First of all, we're just going to look at some notation reminding ourselves how to read inequalities. So we can either read from left to right, which is how we would normally read, but you can also read them going in the opposite direction as well, which um, I'll show you in a second. So looking at the first example, then we've got the X, then the smaller part of the inequality is next to the X. So because the smaller part is next to the X, we read that as X is smaller than four or X is less than four, if you prefer. So x could be any number that's left them less than four. It can't be equal to four. So it could be three, it could be one, um, it could be 3.9. It doesn't have to be a whole number. Looking at the next one then, we've got x and then we've got the big part of the inequality. So that says x is greater than nine. So x can be any value, decimal or whole number that is greater than nine. You could read it just to show you from uh, right to left, if we read it from right to left, that would say 9 is smaller than x. That's exactly the same statement, just worded in a different way. So x is smaller than, sorry, 9 is smaller than x is the same as x is greater than 9. So you can read in either direction, which will become useful later on. The next two then are where you've got the line underneath your inequality. So that can mean that it can be equal to that value as well. So the next one says x is smaller than or equal to minus 2. OK, so x is any value that's smaller than negative 2, but it also could be negative 2. So it could be negative 2, it could be negative 3, it could be negative 3.5. Any of those numbers would be fine. Next one then, um, it doesn't always have to be x, so I've used a here. So this then says a is greater than or equal to 12. So a could be 12, it could be 13, could be 13.7, any value that's greater than or equal to 12. OK, so you can have more than one inequality sign in um, an inequality. And so for these ones, it's sometimes useful not just to read from left to right. It makes more sense if we read from the centre going outwards. OK, so looking at this first one, then it's asking us to list the integer values, so the whole number values that satisfy the following inequalities so that um, are true for the following inequalities. So I could read this first inequality going from left to right, which I'll do now. So that would say three is less than a is which is less than 12. Now, that doesn't make quite as much sense um, easily as if we read from the center going out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read from the a going that way. So that then says a and then the big part is next to the a here because I'm reading backwards. So a is greater than three. So I know that a can be any value that's greater than three. If I look the other way, I'm then going to read the other way and that says a and then I've got the small bit of the inequality. So a is smaller than 12. So if I read those two things together, I've said a is greater than three, but a is less than 12. So a can be any value that's greater than three, 
and less than 12. They've asked us just to list the integer values, the whole number values, because otherwise you'll have to list infinitely many numbers. So any whole number that is greater than 3 but less than 12. So we've got 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11. I can't have 3 and 12 on that list because they cannot be equal to those values because I haven't got the lines underneath my inequalities there. So next example then is reading from the centre going left. So x and then I've got the big bit. So it says x is greater than or equal to minus 2 and x is and then the small bit x is less than 4 so x is greater than or equal to minus um, 2 but x is greater than sorry x is less than 4 so we've then got it can be minus 2 because i've got that equal sign underneath so it can be minus 2 can be minus 1 0 1 2 or 3 it can't be 4 because i haven't got the equals to symbol there the third one then, so centre going outwards, I've got m is greater than minus 10 and m is less than or equal to minus 3. So I need anything greater than minus 10 but less than or equal to minus 3. So we can go minus 9, minus 8, minus 7, minus 6, minus 5, minus 4, minus three and then we stop there so i couldn't have equal to minus 10 but i can have equal to minus three okay now's an opportunity to for you to have a little bit of practice at these make sure that you're confident with them before we go on to some exercises so i'd like you to pause the video now and have a go at noting down your answers to these four questions once you've done that then play the video again and we'll work through those answers to check that you've got them right OK, I hope those questions went well. So let's just quickly work through those together to make sure that you are confident with these ones. So reading from the centre going outwards, x is greater than zero, but x is less than six. So anything greater than zero can't be equal to zero. So two, three, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, but it can't be equal to six. Next one then, x is greater than or equal to minus, sorry, x is greater than minus 4, x is less than or equal to 3. So it can't be minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, and it can be equal to 3 for that one. x is greater than or equal to minus 7, x is less than or equal to minus 1. So minus 7, minus 6, minus 5, minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, and minus 1. This one's slightly different to the ones we've worked with so far, so I've got a decimal here, that's okay. I'm still only listing my integer, my whole number possibilities. So x is greater than or equal to 3.4 and less than 7. So it can't be it can be equal to 3.4, but I only want the integer value. So the next thing larger than that, that's a whole number is going to be four. So it can be four, can be five, can be six, but it can't be seven because I haven't got an equal sign there. OK, we're now going to move on to you having a go at some questions based on the examples that we've done so far. These are uploaded to Show My Homework as well, if you prefer to take them from there. Um, it's named Worksheet 1 on Show My Homework, or you can work directly from this clip if you pause it in a second. I would like you to spend about 15 minutes working on this. That includes you marking your answers within that 15 minutes. Those are uploaded to Show My Homework. They're not on this clip, so you will need to go back to Show My Homework to be able to mark your answers. So please pause this video now and spend about 15 minutes working through and marking those questions. OK, we're now going to move on to drawing inequalities onto a number line. So these aren't can maybe be a little bit confusing because you haven't got a number line there so the biggest thing to remember from this part of the clip is that 
if you have a greater than or equal to or a less than or equal to you're going to need a filled in dot on your number line okay so if it can be equal to that number then the dot is filled in if um, on the other hand it's not filled in that's because it cannot be equal to that value okay and those arrows will make more sense in a second Okay, so for this first type of question, we have been given the inequality in the written form and we're being asked to draw that inequality onto a number line. So first of all, we need to create our number line. So we need to have the numbers involved with on it. On it. So I need five on this one. So I'm going to put five somewhere in the middle of my number line. I'm then just going to complete the rest of the number line that's there. So the inequality, if I read it over here, going from left to right is x is greater than 5. Can't be equal to 5, but x is anything that's greater than 5. So if I look at my number line, the things that are greater than 5 there are 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and that would carry on forever. So on the 5, I need a non-filled in dot because it can't be equal to 5 and then an arrow going that way. You can have the arrow the whole length of your number line, but it doesn't matter if you stop it short because you've got that arrow going on, you know that that's carrying on up in that direction. This next one then says X is less than 12. So again, I'm gonna put 12 somewhere in the middle of my number line and then just complete the rest of that number line. I'm not going to do all of them because it will take a bit too long. So I'm just doing a few numbers either direction. So X is less than or equal to 12. So because it can be equal to 12, I need this dot to be filled in. And it's anything less than 12. So less than 12 goes in that direction. This next one then, reading from the centre going left, X is greater than 3, but X is less than or equal to 6. So I need to make sure that three and six both appear on my number line. So I'm going to start down here at one, two, we've then got three on, four, five, six. We've got our six on and I'll go just a couple the other direction as well. So X needs to be greater than three. So non-filled in dot at three. It would go that way. I'm not going to draw the end of my arrow on for the moment. And then X is less than or equal to six. So less than or equal to six, filled in dot, and it would go that way. So we then just continue that line to join the two up. Then the last one here, x is greater than or equal to minus three, but x is less than two. So hopefully we'll be able to fit all these numbers on the number line. So I'm going to start down at minus four, minus three, minus two, minus one, zero, one, two, and then just a couple above the two that I need to finish at. So X is greater than or equal to minus three. So filled in dot there. Greater than would be going up my number line. Less than two, so non-filled in dot at two. That line would be going downwards. So then I'm just going to join my two lines together. Okay, it's now your turn to have a little bit of a practice at some of these questions. So I would like you to pause this video now and have a go at each of those questions, drawing out your number line for each one. We'll then go through the answers together in a second. Okay, I hope those questions went well. So let's just quickly check your answers to those um, before we move on. So this one then, just reading that way, says X is less than 12. So 12 in the middle, I'm not going to write too many numbers on just for speed. So X is uh, less than 12, can't be equal to 12, so we're going to go that way. Greater than or equal to minus 2, so a couple of numbers in each direction. X is greater than or equal to minus two. So filled in dot going up my number line. 
So reading from centre going left, x is greater than far, minus 5, but less than or equal to 0. So I'm going to start at minus 6, minus 5, minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0. Just go a couple above as well. So x is greater than minus 5, less than or equal to 0. So then it can be anything sandwiched between those two. Last one then, x is greater than or equal to 3, less than 9. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We'll go up to 10. So it can be equal to 3. Anything greater than 3, anything less than or equal to 9. And so then joining our two dots together. OK, the next set of questions then is just doing exactly the same, but in reverse. So we're given the picture. We're trying to write down the inequality. We'll use X each time, but it might not be an X. But X is a good one to go for if you're not told the letter to use. So non filled in, so can't be equal to. And it's going up the number line. It's getting bigger. So X can be anything greater than um, one. So x is greater than 1, anything more than 1 on the number line. This one's got a filled in dot, so it can be equal to. So this one, x, and is anything smaller than or equal to 5. So x is less than or equal to 5. Next one then is the type where we have um, 2. So here we've got x is greater than 0. So we're going to put the 0 here. And we want it to read x is greater than zero. So the big bit of my inequality needs to be next to the x. We then want it to read that it is less than or equal to three. So the small bit needs to be next to the x now because it's less than, less than or equal to three. So if we read that from the centre going left, that says x is greater than zero. And centre going right, x is um, less than or equal to 3. Last one then, both can be equal to because they're both filled in dots. So x is bigger than or equal to, so because the big bit's next to the x, bigger than or equal to minus 3. And then x is smaller than, so the small bit next to the x, or equal to 4. Okay, so your turn now to have a go at practicing some of these so i'd like you to pause the video have a go at writing down the inequalities and then restart the video in a second to check your answers okay so i hope those go went well so let's quickly mark what you've done for that so going down the number line so smaller than so x is smaller or less than minus three can't be equal to minus three because it's a non filled in dot this one again is going down the number line so it's a smaller than so x is smaller than less than or equal to and my dot is on zero next one then two non filled in dots so none of the equal bit underneath the inequality so x is greater than zero less than five so x, I then need the big bit next to the x, so x is greater than 0. And then the small bit next to the x, x is less than 5. Last one then, so x is greater than, so the big bit next to the x, minus 3. And x is less than, so small bit next to the x, or equal to um, 4. Final task then to be completing today is this one here. It might be easier to download it from Show My Homework because it's a little bit small on here. Um, also, if you've got a printer and you can use it, then it's slightly quicker to print it because the number lines are already drawn for you. But it's no problem at all. If you haven't got a printer, you'll just need to draw your number lines out yourself. So the ones on uh, question one are you're given the inequality and you need to draw it on the number line and then the reverse for part two. Um, they've given it to you on the number line. You need to draw it. So please pause the video now.
um, to do those or download it from Show My Homework. Again, the solutions are on Show My Homework um, for you to mark your answers after the end of that. So that should take you 20 minutes in total. Okay, I hope those last set of questions went well and you've been able to mark them and did really well with those. Well done. Okay, so just thinking about my first slide that we had at the beginning. So looking at what we've covered today. So we've covered just a quick recap of the notation, how to read the notation. Um, so hopefully you've understood that well. We then went on to um, listing the integer values, the possible whole number answers that we could get for an inequality. And then also you're able to draw them on a number line. Um, or be shown a number line and be able to write down the inequality. And then in our next session, we're going to start looking at solving inequalities as well. Hope you have a really good rest of the day and I'll catch up with you again next time.